That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is requiring their employees to wear masks. Now, this should come as a surprise to nobody because the Wisconsin governor has mandated masks, and this is a government entity that is run by the state. So, you know, the Department of Natural Resources, of course, they have to wear masks, and they have to wear masks in meetings. The thing that is stupid about it is that now they are requiring masks for meetings even if it's a teleconference meeting over Zoom. I promise this is their new standard now. You can check this out. This is from an email on July the 31st that they sent out, according to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Also wear your mask, even if you are home, to participate in a virtual meeting that involves being seen, such as on Zoom or another video conferencing platform by the DNR staff set safety example which set the safety example which shows you as a DNR public service employee care about the safety and health of others this is one of the craziest things that i've ever seen and the funny thing about it is is they admit in the email oh we know that this has nothing to do with the virus we know that you're in zero danger of transferring the virus or getting the virus from somebody else we want you to wear the mask just so other people can see you wearing the mask it's absolute insanity do they first of all i'll just go with this this is virtual sig virtue signaling of the highest level. They absolutely know and are even admitting in the email that it doesn't do any good. They know that it's useless. They know that there's no scientific evidence whatsoever that there's even a possibility you could prevent from giving the virus to somebody else or receiving it from somebody else. But they want you to wear it anyway so it'll show everybody else that you're on board with the mask thing. Here's the reason that this bothers me so much. The masks have become a religious totem. It's just like people who go around with, and I know I'm going to offend some people, but I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm obligated to speak the truth. And I'm not saying that these things are inherently bad. I'm just saying that they can become bad. It's like people that wear a giant cross around their neck to show off to everybody that they're a Christian. Or when they do the, the cross thing on Ash Wednesday to show everybody that they're a Catholic. Or to uh, just to throw another religion in there for the Jews. You remember the Jews, one of the things that Christ criticized the Pharisees for is they would wear these giant phylacteries on their, their robes or right there on their forehead. And... These things were, were like leather satchels that had little pieces of scripture in them. Now, it wasn't so that they could like, you know, take the scripture out and read it. It was to show everybody else, look, I'm a righteous person. I'm a Jew that is, uh, you know, so righteous and so holy and so in tune with God that I'm wearing this giant symbol of my religion on my head for everybody else to see. And, and Jesus was noticeably angry about this. Specifically because they were more worried about how other people reacted to the religious symbol than they were actually being righteous. That was the problem that Jesus had. The mask is the same thing to some people. Now, I do want to preface this. That does not mean that every single person that wears the mask, that it is a religious totem to them. But the people that are writing this email that are saying, no, no, it's really just for show. Or the reporters, like you remember right here in the state of Alabama, in Mobile, where we had, or wait, this was Gulf Shores, yeah. So in Gulf Shores, you may remember a few months ago, we had a CNN reporter coming down to Gulf Shores, Alabama. I think it was uh, right back at the, the, the very beginning of the pandemic, or, or right, no, it was right when we were starting to reopen things. Um, and they went down to Gulf Shores and did a report, and the guy was wearing a mask on the beach when it's windy and 97 degrees outside and he's six feet away from everybody he's still wearing the mask on the beach despite the fact that it's not doing him a lick of good and then the second the cameras start rolling there were people taking pictures of him with the mask off walking around on the exact same beach like he knows that the mask isn't doing him any good why does he have it on when the camera is on him because 
because it is a religious totem to him. He's virtue signaling to everybody else, hey, I'm on board with the mask thing. And we've seen this with several other stories. I was just using one as a local because, you know, I'm a local news guy. Uh, but there are many, many examples from all over the country. In fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, this one actually comes from Wisconsin. I know it was one of those Rust Belt states where there was a reporter and he's there on camera and he's wearing a mask and he's, he's walking past and talking about how there's too many people out here not wearing masks. And there's another guy that walks past and he notices that he's not wearing a mask. And then this guy starts filming with his camera and he goes, and he's not wearing a mask either. He's like, yeah, and neither are your camera crew. <laughs> and then the reporter's just like, uh, uh, he's got no answer to it. I'm not, from the very beginning, I've never been anti-mask. I've been anti-mask mandates, but I've never been anti-mask. Nor am I saying that I'm absolutely a thousand percent sure the mask do absolutely nothing. I've not seen evidence that they do help prevent the spread of the disease, but maybe they help in some ways. But even with all of that aside, there are certain people that has become this religious totem that I have to put the mask on to show solidarity with everybody that is on the pro-mask side, whether or not it's actually doing any good or not. To them, it's more important for other people to see them wearing it because they're virtue signaling. And really, what this is boiling down to when, when you get to its core the issue here is scientism over science because if you were following the science you would never recommend anybody wear a mask on a teleconference you would also not be wearing a mask when you're on tv reporting despite the fact that you're six feet away from everybody and you know it's 87 degrees outside and there's no chance you're getting the disease from that point, uh, the, the reason that they're doing it is because they worship science as though it's a god. That science must be conjured rather than science being a useful tool to be used. Because that's what science is, right? It's a method. It's not even an ideology. Science is just a method. It is a method for discovering truth. And I'm a pretty big fan of science. There's a reason I have a bachelor's of science in ag communication. There's a reason that I specifically chose a communication degree where I would be taking harder sciences, harder biologies, and all because I believe in that stuff. I think that that's important. The scientism people don't. To them, it's about uh, making a political statement and a statement that I'm on board with science. And also there's 87 genders. Like it, uh, it, It's all of that stuff. Scientism is the belief that science is some kind of magical MacGuffin that solves all of your problems. And it also helps resolve a cognitive dissonance, and I think that's the reason that a lot of these people buy into this, is that when they, they celebrate, for example, Herman Cain dying of it because he didn't really like wearing the mask, and he at one point went to a Trump rally, which was a, you know, a mask gathering event, the reason that they can do that is because they believe it creates some kind of cognitive dissonance psychologically in their own mind, where they're kind of like, well, this person did all the things wrong and he didn't believe in science hard enough. Again, making it more like a religion than actual science. Like if you believe hard enough that it's somehow going to help you, that he didn't believe in it, I do believe in it, and I'm doing all the right things, therefore it can't touch me. Well, no, you're at risk either way. There are some things you can do that certainly reduce your risk, but the risk is still there. And a lot of these people treat it as though it's not. They treat it as though science is a god, a deity, to be worshipped. And if they make the right sacrifices, and if they do the, the religious rituals exactly the right way, that the god of science is going to favor them and protect them. That's not what science is, y'all. Science is not an entity, it's not a deity, it, it doesn't care what you do or don't do. Science is just a method. It's a very good method. It's one that I've spent a lot of time and a, and a, a big portion of my life studying. But ultimately, that's all it is. You have to keep science and politics in its proper place. In so many ways, science and politics, they're idols. They have become idols. They're not always idols. They can be good things, too. I wouldn't be doing a political talk show if I didn't believe that, but they're idols. And that really brings me to this. What this assumes is that people are morons and they are essentially animals that just 
you know, monkey see, monkey do. If I see someone wearing the mask, then psychologically that will encourage me to wear my mask and that kind of thing. It's ridiculous. People make their own decisions. And if a person sees a thousand people not wearing masks and decides, okay, well, I've got a, I've, I'm going to wear my mask to protect myself, that can happen. People are adults. They can make their own decisions. They don't need you, a ridiculous government bureaucrat, to model some kind of behavior for them. They're adults. They can make their own decisions. Do you think that people are so dumb that they can watch a whole bunch of people on teleconference that aren't wearing masks and going, oh, I guess masks not, must not be all that important if they're not wearing them in their own house by themselves? This goes to a, a core liberal belief, unfortunately. They believe the average person is just too stupid to think for themselves and they need the wise, uh, enlightened despots of the government, the government bureaucracy, to show them the light and show them the way forward. Conservatives, we tend to be individualist and we don't believe in all that stuff. I mean, we believe that they can be helpful and we believe that part of leadership is examples but we also believe that people have common sense and can look at things and make their own decisions. And that really does show a pretty substantial divide between these two ideologies is because I wouldn't look at somebody wearing a mask or not wearing a mask in their own home doing a teleconference and assume that I need to model whatever behavior they are. And that brings me to one final point for all the people that are going, ha ha, this doesn't apply to me because I'm against the mask. Well, that can be an idol, too. And frankly, I've met some people that I think not wearing a mask is kind of an idol to them. I try to make sure that even though I'm not really convinced about the effectiveness of masks, that I don't fall into that camp. But not wearing a mask can be just as much of an idol as wearing the mask. If, if you're one of those people that, you know, just doesn't do it to, to make some kind of statement... I genuinely can understand that. I'm somebody that believes in political protest and the, the power of free speech. But you can go too far with that. Like, it, even though there have been times where I don't wear a mask specifically because I don't like people telling me that I have to, there are also times where I defer to the fact that I don't want to affect somebody else's freedom. Or if I'm going into a place where I know there's going to be a lot of vulnerable people that I might wear one then just because I want to be considerate of them. But you can turn not wearing a mask into an idol as well. Because if you're doing that to make a political statement and you want other people to see you not wearing a mask, well, to be frank, that can be just as much of an idol as what they're talking about. But when we talk about idolatry and modern-day idolatry, in a lot of ways... Science and politics are just like suns and rivers and all of the other things that people back in the olden days used to worship. It's the worship of nature, and also it's things that aren't necessarily in and of themselves bad, like the sun, very good thing. It's a blessing, blessing given to us by God during the time of creation. Same thing with rivers and soil and trees and all the other things that people used to worship. Those things aren't bad things, but we have to make sure that we keep them in their proper place. That's ultimately what we need to realize, is that even things that are a good thing, like science, like... Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm more hesitant to say politics is a good thing, but, it, you know, it can be. So even things that are amoral and, and are just good or bad based on the way that you use them those things can become idols if we don't make sure to remember that they are not God. God is God. And we have to always keep that at the forefront of our mind. These things, like politics, like religion, they can be very good when used correctly, but they are not worthy of religious devotion. That is something that belongs to God and God alone. <laughs> Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.